Hello everyone, I think we can start, it's just seven o'clock. Um, welcome to the third session of the series of four career coaching webinars. Uh, tomorrow will be the last session. It's nice to see everyone every day, so I think by Friday we're going to actually miss each other. It starts to feel like family. Um, today's webinar is all about the um, testing of your career. So Peter will be going through a practical example. Um, you are welcome to follow along on your own computer or otherwise you can actually try it out afterwards. Again, same rules apply. You are on mute and if you have any questions, please feel free to participate in the chat and then after the session, we will allow for questions and answers. Thank you very much and enjoy the session. Thanks, Peter. Thanks, Lizette. Good evening, everybody, and welcome. Um, this evening will be uh, two parts. I have decided to go back to Industry 4 uh, and the implications and what is in the pipeline for us and what is Industry 4 about and the implications of Industry 4 on careers and career planning. So we will spend five, six, seven minutes plus questions on that again because um, the majority of questions I have received um, via communication is uh, around Industry 4 and questions around Industry 4. But the plan for tonight is that we use the test your career functionality that is part of Shadow Match. Now, just a comment in between. It's the only system that has the ability to do this. Um, and the questions are unique to the individual. So my questions and your questions independently and individually will be different. So what it does is it uses the behavioral patterns in my behavior to uh, generate the questions and to decide on the questions that are most important for a career that I am interested in following. <clears throat> so how it works is the system looks at the patterns in my behavior and in, my, in my, uh, the way in which I answer the questions and then it decides um, these are the most important questions to determine if a career will fit this individual. And then it generates the questions as per each individual's um, habits or, pre or behavioral um, directives or, or, or patterns. So I'm going to show you tonight, I've tested a few careers for myself. Um, I, will sh I will share my screen and then I will go through the process and I will just also, in the, in, in, during the discussion, share with you what other uh, meaningful applications are there in this test your career capabilities of the system once you have your career report. So let me share your, my screen with you and then we will start the process. So what we do, ladies and gentlemen, we go to our career reports. Um, on, our, on the Shadowmatch portal, obviously you log in, go to shadowmatch.co.za, enter your email address, your uh, username, password, your email address is your username, your password then is one that you have decided. Uh, go to your career report and this is the report with all the videos and the visuals and we scroll down, 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 right to the end of the report. And then there we can download the template to do a summary of my career. In other words, the visual summary that we have done uh, last night, which is obviously very important because it forces the individual to think about uh, what are the major points that I need to keep in mind and, and where do I need to um, be careful of some of the, of the indicators that, 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 that warns me. So you will see now that at the end, there is a test your, your career results. Um, and then right at the bottom, this won't be there unless you have already tested some careers. Then right at the bottom, bottom there's a test new career. I'm going to click on this now. But what I want to show you is I was a minister of religion in the Dutch Reformed Church for, for 12 years. And it was, it was tough for me. I must be honest with, with you. It was, a, it was a very tough job. So what I did is I used the test your career to determine, but what is it that was so tough for me when I was a minister? And I answered the questions very honestly. And this is the result that I got. It says the career minister of religion that you have tested has a 24% match to your habits. In the following areas, um, you will be become frustrated with your, with this career. It says, 
in these two areas, I will experience a slight level of frustration. In other words, taking control, the, the job doesn't really allow you to take strong control of the situation. And then the complexities of the work was not, it didn't satisfy me. It's very much the same thing every week. And then um, once you've got it, you've got it. And then uh, certain frustration areas. In other words, this is not, this is not a slight, this is certain you, you will be frustrated by this. Not enough uh, room to simplify work content, working with problems, not enough problems to work with immediacy and being quick. The church is a relatively slow working machine. Uh, work sharing, it's very individualistic and, uh, and, and, and they, the, the work sharing part of the job uh, didn't really work for me. Um, work with people, too much intensity on that. Caring for people, way too much intensity on that. My caring of people habits are too low. And then dominant people focus will frustrate and this is actually what frustrated me these things these things i just I, it just became too much for me um and then i did a test on a farmer i'm going to do a farmer tonight again because that's what i promised i'm going to i tested a farmer but this was where i am the farmer owner of the land so i am the owner of the land and i farm on a medium large uh, farming scale so here what I see is these are the frustrations that I, that I will have, but there's a new one here, high risk frustration, caring for people. My experience as the child of a farmer that there was a high content of taking care of people because the farming community where I grew up, the majority of people living in the area were quite were, were, uh, were poor people. And, the, and my dad, for instance, had to do a lot of caretaking of these people. And then I did a research psychologist. Now you will remember last night that research was one of the things that came up in my, in my recommendations continuously that attracted me and I tested uh, the work of a research psychology, a research psychologist, and uh, I got the results from that and it says, not bad. You can make this work and it can work for you. If you decide to pursue this, this work, this work hard and know that you have more aspects on your side than against you. So the system says, this is a strong match to my habits. I can, I can take this as a positive recommendation. But now, ladies and gentlemen, I want to go back to the farmer and say, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. I'm very interested in this farming thing. And um, I'm going to test a specific. So my aim is to start working on a big commercial farm, a big farm, not, not, a, not a medium size uh, 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 place, not a medium size farm and a medium sized business. I wanna work on one of these mega farms with these, with these big infrastructures. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, but what about the work of a commercial farmer? And I'm going to test this. So what I want you to see, ladies and gentlemen, is you can use this functionality to test whether your current career works for you as well. Um, now, I want to tell you a story. Um, one, of, one of the people that I know quite well, um, he tested his career and it came out very bad, very, very bad. And he said to his wife, but how can this be? This is my career. It must work for me. And she said to him, it doesn't work for you. See how unhappy you are? The system is quite correct. So let's go. We're going to test the commercial farmer. And now, ladies and gentlemen, in this career. Now, what I want to share with you is, remember, you need to be, do a bit of research. Um, this is quite important because if you don't know the job or the career, you will not be able to answer these questions. And there are many ways we will include in the email that we send out, that, that Lizette will send out with a recording, uh, at least one website where you can do a lot of research around what is it that a commercial farmer actually does? What is it that sits in this career that you need to know? What do they do? But another tip that I wanna give you is you can Google 
a day in the life of a commercial farmer. And then there will be hundreds of videos, one minute, two minute, three minute, five minute videos. The best thing, the best way to understand a job is to make contact with a real commercial farmer and say, can I get 10 minutes of your time? I want to, I want to test if the job, the career that you are in and the work that you are doing will work for me. Sometimes it's not easy, but that is actually your best option. So in this career as a commercial farmer, is it necessary to make things easier? Let me, let, let us, let's just go through everything. Make things easier is not important for success in this job. Making things easier is important, but not critical. Making things easier and more effective is part of your work. And then making things easy, quick and efficient is the job. From what I've seen, um, what commercial farmers do is they work on a very senior level of management. But for them to understand the, the, the farming strategy, um, it is, it is, it, I can't say it's not easy. I cannot say it's not important. I think it's making things easier is important, but not critical because on a commercial farm, there are lots of people working and, and making things easier become part of the collective responsibility of everybody that works there. So it doesn't only boil down to one individual. This job as a commercial farmer is free of problems to resolve. No, 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 no. That's, that's unfortunately not true has very few problems. No, that's also not true. Does from time to time present a problem to be resolved, but this is not the rule. Ah, no, these people have to plan very much in detail around problems. Has lots of problems to resolve every day. I'm going to select that one from the research that I've done. Let's see just another one. Um, it's all about solving problems. Problem solving is the job. Um, I don't think it's that intense. Then the pace and speed of activities in this, in, the job, in this job is, now the commercial farming career that I will be interested in will be in maize or corn, uh, but it, it, it won't be in the anim, on the animal side. It won't be cattle or horses or, that, or sheep or that kind of. It would, I'm not the blood and tears kind of person. So caring for living things, it's not my thing. Um, so uh, it will more be in the maybe fruit, maybe vegetables, maybe something that doesn't bleed and they don't cry. So the pace of speed and activities in this job. Mm, this is a tough one. If once you've planted the stuff, it's slow, very slow because you've got to wait. But um, relatively slow, but does not stagnate. I like that one. It's slow, but keeps on moving and things continuously happen at a reasonable and manageable pace. I think it's minimum that, let me just see what the other two are. It's intense. In other words, the pace on speed is intense. Things happen quickly and the pace of events is high. This is actually true because there are specific phases in the, in the, in the, in the life of a commercial farm where things must really happen quickly. For instance, if there's a, if you are in the planting season and it just rained, then you've got to, you've got to get your, your stuff in the, in the ground. So I have a sneaky feeling that this is probably the most responsible way of assessing that. The work you will do in this career can easily be done by fellow team members. Mm, I'm not convinced. Only be done by those with specific knowledge and experience, I think we're coming closer. Only be shared with persons qualified for the job. Yeah, that's good, that's a bit more intense. Not to be done by anybody who is not qualified and part of the specific job. I actually like this one. If you're not qualified to work on a farm and to, to understand agriculture, this is a running a commercial farm will be above your knowledge and above your skills. So uh, let's have a look at the last one, not be done by others unless they are in the same position of knowledge and experience as the one doing the job. I think that's too intense. That's a bit of an extreme position to take. We only have a few questions left. So let's go this one. The majority of tasks in the workplace related to this career 
can easily be shared with other team members. Mm, I think there's a, there's a high level of sharing. Be shared with those with experience and a bit of training, yeah. Only be shared with those qualified for the job. Be shared only with a very selected few. Um, only be shared with anybody, uh, not to be shared with anybody unless they are part of the same job and project. I think that's too intense, but let's have a look at the last one. Only be done by an individual who takes full and final control of tasks. Um, this is actually true, but I think it's a more balanced approach somewhere here. Be shared only with a very selected few. If you're in the management of a commercial farm, uh, the, that job cannot be shared by anybody. And they're not to be shared by, with anybody unless they are part of the same job and project. This is actually the best one because if you come from a different farm and a different line of agriculture, it will be very difficult to just fit into this one. But I'm going to take that one just to be a bit softer on the intensity of that question. So working with people, that's the heading of the next question, is not really part of the job. It's a low key portion of this job. Uh, you only work with a few close colleagues. Is an active part of the work, but by far not the only part of the work to be done. I like this one. Is critical for success in the job. Um, I think it is. I think it is. If you run a farm and there are five or six or 700 people working on the farm and it's a seasonal thing, you pull people into the farming community to work for a few weeks and then they move on to the next farm, uh, the negotiations and the people intensity of that, that workforce can become, can become a bit of a challenge. Um, as it is all, this is all the job is about. You only work with people. Now, I don't think that's it. I think it's about there. It, from what I've seen in the videos I've watched, it's an active part of this work, but by far not the only part of the work to be done. I think it's there. Then helping people in need who are in such a desperate situation that they can't help themselves. This is where a lot of jobs disqualify me. I, I cannot get around this one. I just... I fail on this one every time. So let's see how I do on this one. It's not all part of this job. I think if it's a big farm and it's a going concern as a business unit, I don't think it's part of the job. It's not part of the job, but for, from time to time, a colleague needs help. Um, I think this happens. It's part of the job, but it doesn't dominate the work. I think that's too intense. I think on a big farm, the things must be in place so that it's not, it doesn't dominate the job. It's an important part of the career, but it's not the only thing that needs to be done. I don't think it's, it's, the, it's not the focus of a career. It's, like a, it's not like a social worker or something like that. It's the only thing the career is about. This is an unselfish career in the interest of people in need. Um, I won't make it for this one. I think... It's part of the job, but it doesn't dominate the work content. Um, it's part of the job, but from time to time, a colleague needs help. I think it could be there, but I think in a farming community, it's more sort of on this level. So let's go there. What I've seen is some of the American farmers where the farmer, actually these commercial farmers are actually care centers. They build schools for the people and they have nurseries and they've got small hospitals and care. Yeah, that'll disqualify me for that. And then the complexity of this career and the, domin the demands on your ability to successfully work with problems is such that anybody who can read and understand a daily newspaper will be able to do the job. Ah, uh -uh, no, I think it's, 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 a, it's three notches above that one. Then someone who has successfully completed high school will be able to do the job. I think he will, but there are some specialist areas in the work and life of commercial farmers that need a bit more knowledge than that. Someone who did well in high school with success in all their subjects will be able to do the work. I think so. I think it's, it's, it's yeah, I think they will be able to do it. But I think if you really want to excel at this at a career, the majority of people uh, will experience the complexities to be a stretch. 
I don't think so. I think I don't think the, the, the job on a commercial farm is that complex unless you run a very specialized and a highly, highly specialized farming an initiative. It could be, it could be if you are in fruit or in highly specialized vegetables, um, I think it, it can be very, very stretching uh, in terms of the problem solving and the, the complexity of the, of the working environment. Only a small percentage of society will be able to deal with it successfully. I don't think it's that tough. I think it's somewhere between this one and that one. And I'm going to say it's the complexities are probably just above the average, the average job. Um, then mark the options that this career emphasizes the most. Should the career between be a mixture of them, you can select more than one option. So here we can select more than one of these check boxes. Working intensely with people. I don't think on a commercial farm we can say that. I think it's more working with things, with objects, tractors and, and, and machinery and plants. That's where I'm interested in. Working intensely with objects and tasks that are only related to things. I like that. I think it's a very task and, 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 and practical operational um, uh, environment. Working intensely with ideas, plans and concepts I have a sneaky feeling this is not what dominates the, 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 the life of a farmer. I think it's dominated by that. So let's, let's take that one in between while we, we read the, the, the last one. There is an almost perfect balance of working with people, with ideas and working with things. I don't think so. I think it's dominated by working with things, with objects, with machinery, with plants, with operational stuff and, 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 and physical things. So I'm, I'm, I, I'm, this one won't convince me easily. And from what I've seen, it's a very, very task intense working environment. Select the sentence which best describes this career. In this career, you must be prepared to work predominantly with theoretical content. That's unfortunately, I can't take that. It's not, that, this is just, just not true about, about this career. In this career, you must be prepared to work predominantly with practical, physical and technical and, and technical work objects. I think that's the dominating uh, part. And then this career provides you with a perfect balance between theoretical and physical slash practical. I'm not convinced. I think we are there. Let's ask the system to do a calculation. Um, the career commercial farmer that you have tested has a 46% match. Um, to your habits. Uh, that's not, I, I'm going to struggle with this. Um, it's like an exam. You get 46% at university, you fail. In the following areas, you will become frustrated with this career. Slight frustration areas, working with problems. It's not intense enough. Work sharing, uh, the complexity of career. Complexity is not, is not complex enough. High risk frustration area, caring for people. I knew it. I knew it, this one is going to, to drop me out. Certain frustrations, certain frustra frustration areas, to simplify work content, not enough. Working with people, there's a content of working with people that is too high for my habits. Um, dominant object focus, I need dominant ideas focus. Dominant practical content, I need dominant um, theoretical content. So I have failed the test to become a commercial farm. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you have 10 of these tests and you can use them to test whether the career that you are interested in will work for you or not. But do a bit of preparation. Don't just run it and test it and then so, and don't manipulate the thing you know what we do we are so clever we are so smart and so clever we manipulate the outcome we say i want this job to fit my habits and intuitively i know what it is because we can feel our habits we can we can feel um you know if i select this one like working helping people in need i knew it when i selected that thing i knew i'm going to fail here when I selected the intensity of working with people is relatively, relatively high. It's of medium intensity. I knew I'm going to fail with this. 
So don't do it. Don't do it. Don't, don't, don't sort of in an artificial way design an outcome with a questionnaire. It's, it's, it, that, it's not going to work. You're just going to get a result that will push you in a direction that won't work for you. So do a bit of research, um, do a bit of an analysis, make sure that you understand the career, um, Google a day in the life of a commercial farmer, watch one or two or three or five videos, make sure that you, that you are in it. If you can make contact with somebody, as I said, try your very best to find, but this is work that the individual must do. Somebody else can't do it for you, ladies and gentlemen, and this is why I'm extremely critical about this thing. Let's send somebody for a, and, and, and test them and say, become this. It doesn't work that way. You've got you've to you've get yourself in the skin of the, of the potential career that you want to follow. But if you are currently in a job, test it. Test your, the current job that you are doing and see if it fits your habits. And, 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 and see if you don't need to maybe Somebody said to me something interesting the other day. Maybe change your ways. But somebody said to me an interesting thing the other day, ladies and gentlemen, it's a very wise man that I am friends with for a long time. And he said, you know what? I never realized that I was unhappy in my job because it was normal. I became used to a level of unhappiness with my job. And I never realized that I can actually be happy in the work that I do. Now, this is a serious thing for somebody to say, because it says that I'm used to a level of unhappiness and that's okay for me. So um, we must be honest with ourselves. I think if we, if we work in an intelligent way, we can design a career that works optimally for us. And this is, um, before we go into the industry for uh, last portion of our discussion for the evening, I want to tell you a wonderful story about somebody that I met um, because of my hobby as, as in flying. Let's call the person, the name of the person, let's make it Wilson. Wilson was the child or is the child of a mother and a father who are, they are uh, lawyers. And his brother is a lawyer as well. So the whole family had this one thing in our family, the children, go to university, they study law. Wilson didn't want to do it, but, but fighting this family culture, ladies and gentlemen, can become a nightmare, especially for young people. And, and, and if, you are, if you are a parent, please don't do it. Please don't tell your children what they must become. Allow them to find their way. But Wilson, okay, he said, all right, I need to go to university because this is the culture of my of my family and I can't really get out of it. But Wilson had a dream from a very early age in his life. And I will tell you when we, when we conclude the story, what he said, he, want, he wanted to fly. Wilson wanted to fly. But his father and his parents said, we're, going, we're not going to sponsor a pilot's license. It's expensive. Um, we won't pay for that. We will pay for a law degree. That's it. Or engineering. But that's it. If you want to go to university, law, engineering, medicine, that's it. So he went to university, studied law, and he went to his parents' practice, law practice, and he did his internship, registered as a, as a lawyer, um, and uh, he started working with his parents, but he hated every moment. He said to me, Peter, when I, when I would drive to my, my office where, my, where I have to face customers, I, it was, I felt like I'm driving to death. And then he applied for a job at a very small little airline in South Africa. They fly um, international visitors to the remote bushes in Africa for hunting trips, very dangerous flying, very dangerous. And they fly into small landing strips and they take hunters and, and, and people that would like to go on safari to some of these small remote uh, farms and, 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 and venues. And he applied um, for a job to become their legal compliance officer. In other words, it was his responsibility to see that they comply to all the legalities of, of the business that they are in, flying people, being a registered commercial fly, 
uh, uh, operation and flying into dangerous places and flight plans and, 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 and he got himself into it and he got the job. But one of the pilots had on the sideline a small aircraft where on weekends he would train people to become pilots. That was just his hobby and a bit of an income and at least the, the, the airplane was flying. So he said to this colleague at this new place, but can you teach me how to fly? And the guy said to me, come, I'll teach you how to fly and I'll give you a special price. If you, if you carry the cost of the fuel and the running cost of the aircraft, I'll teach you to fly. Within months, he had his uh, uh, private pilot's license and he then started to co-pilot these commercial flights into the, into, the, into the bush. And he started to build flying hours. So from Monday to Friday, he was the lawyer and the legal compliance officer for this, for this operation. And on weekends, he would co-pilot into, the, into these flying ventures. And he started to build hours, 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 and eventually got his commercial pilot's license. And he then went to the, to, the, to the board of this business and he said to the shareholders, I don't want to be the legal compliance officer anymore. Can I do it part-time for you? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, I want to fly. And they said, will you be able to do it for us? He said, yes, I'll be able to do it. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, he was the, 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 the legal compliance officer as a lawyer. And then Thursday, Friday, and Saturday and Sundays, he would fly uh, as a commercial pilot. And he said to me, Peter, I couldn't wait for, for, for Wednesday evening. I couldn't wait. I couldn't wait. He said, and on a Sunday evening, I was depressed, depressed to go to office because I know that I had to face paperwork and I have to face legal compliance and then and, and eventually, he got his way and he became one of the full-time commercial pilots and he started to train a, a young lawyer to, uh, to become the legal compliance officer for this, for this business. But something interesting happened. The guy who taught him to fly said to him, why don't we start our own um, academy uh, to teach pilots to fly? And we only do it weekends. So Monday to Friday, we fly commercial and then Saturday and Sunday, uh, if you don't fly, I will teach. If I fly, you teach our students. And if you fly, I, I teach our students. And they, they bought a second aircraft. And they started to build this business as a, as, a, as a business. And now, ladies and gentlemen, he's a quite well-known person in the flying community in South Africa because what he discovered was that students who learn to fly, the subject that they fail most, is law. When they have to uh, uh, write the law exam on, on, on how the, the, air, the air spaces are legally controlled and when can you fly and when not and what, when do you need to renew your license and under what, all those legalities, they battle with that as a subject. And he started to become a specialist in training pilots for their law exam and is currently one of the most well-known pilot trainers that what he does is he teaches the students to, to, to the law part of the exams in flight. So he would take them out and show them where the borders are with the aircraft and say, this is what, this is what it means. This is why this law works like this. And with that, he is now very well known as one of the individuals who teach students to get through their law exams when they, when they need to write either a private pilot's license exam on law or a commercial or senior commercial license uh, exam. And he said to me what, what I had a discuss, discussion one day with him. He said to me, you know what, Peter, since I was a little boy, I always was in, I, I did everything flying. If I took my bicycle, the bicycle became an aircraft. I was flying. He said, when I had to when my parents were driving the car and I was in the back seat, the car became in my mind an aircraft. He said, my life is in flying. I will die flying and I want to die flying. This is my life. So the important thing, ladies and gentlemen, what he discovered was my career is in flying. And what I need to do is I need to use my law degree as a building block in my career. My career is to be a pilot. How can I use my law degree to fit in a, in, a, in a critical spot that will build my career 
as a as a as a pilot and as a as a flying as a pilot instructor this is what we must do we must even if it if it is necessary for us to redirect our careers if you see in this test that we have just now done your your current career doesn't work for you you need to plan you need to plan ladies and gentlemen because it can become i have a very close family member very close to me who was unhappy for 50 years in his job and he suffers serious depression now because if your job remember the four things that that i said when we started day one four things must be in place for you to be a happy successful and fulfilled individuals your home must be a loving caring place where you feel that you are accommodated in a nice positive and a, and and a, and a caring environment your relationships must work your physical condition of your body must be intact and your career must work if one of these four collapse you run the risk of becoming very compromised in your in your personal uh, happiness and fulfillment and in in search of meaning in life so that is that is the important part of this now i'm not going to allow for questions right now ladies and gentlemen i need to go back to something that that everybody asks and this will take us five minutes and i'm going to share my screen again and take you through another exercise that um just for clarity in the world of industry four there are four work places in the mainstream economy of the world and this will this will manifest and pan out increasingly in, as increasing important uh, uh, constructs of work they will be left top the designers they will be right top the technical enablers they will be left bottom the functional enablers and they will be the artist now what we must understand ladies and gentlemen is the, the system designers can be a mechanical engineer that works on a project to build that artificial hand where the individual can control the fingers uh, by means of thinking so if he if he if he if he, if he thinks close your hand or i want to close my hand there's a specific feeling and the me the mechanical engineer work on he worked on the design of that hand so that it can it can operate and it can function as a sort of working hand but in the same project there were electronic engineers who had to build sensors that could pick up the signal from the brain or from the upper muscle in the arm if you want to close the well currently the upper micro muscles in the arm but they're working on picking up the nerve the nerve impulse so these are electronic engineers and they work on that part of the project but they were material engineers who had to design the material that is best to manufacture that hand and then there are what they call control system engineers they make the electronic signal talk to the fingers so they translate the electronic signal that the electronic engineers provide them with they translate that into a message that that operates the fingers so there's a team and then there's a medical team ladies and gentlemen to determine which muscles are triggered by the brain in the upper arm so that we have a reliable signal for the hand to close and to open so it's a team and now there's they and they, there's now a lot of programmers who must now take the programming side of this and build a microchip that sits in the hand it feeds off a small little battery and it operates the hand and there are now a, 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 a room full of program programmers who need to now do that system engineering software development so this is what the designers do i want to show you another example this ladies and gentlemen if you have somebody with a comp compromised um, hearing then one of the difficulties they have is they cannot determine where does the sound come from that i hear especially if they use um, electronic hearing support devices this one that you see is the first one that they will give to people with with uh, hearing um, challenges uh, 
and it will enable them to hear where does the sound come from. So this is a typical industry for capability. It, 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 it is a very advanced piece of equipment. And on this project, there are medical doctors, there are electronic engineers, there are sound engineers, uh, because this thing must determine where the sound comes from. So you've got one on each ear and it determines which ear is closest to the sound um, source. And then by determining that, it tells the brain where does the sound come from. It's a fascinating piece of equipment that's been designed by a team. This is an everyday thing now, ladies and gentlemen, and you will see this coming into the houses um, at, a, at a very high pace. It's a, it's a cleaning device. You can buy them now, they can wash the floor and they can vacuum clean the carpets. They don't fall off the stairs. They see the stairs and they, they work just to the edge of the stairs. They can work um, the whole house. And the fascinating thing is they can put a map on your phone where they have worked and the spots that they couldn't reach. So if you look on your phone, you can see that uh, my, my device didn't clean these parts of the room because it couldn't, get, uh, it couldn't fit itself under the chair or there was something in the way. This is, this, these things are becoming so cheap, ladies and gentlemen. We will see them in every house within, well, in every middle income house within the next five to 10 years. So there are engineers building these things. Um, there are, they are a pack of engineers behind the scene working out how this thing should work and how it should um, work in the, in the domestic and in commercial environments. So who works here, ladies and gentlemen? There's a lot of medical knowledge necessary here. Engineers, almost all engineers can go and work. They are trained to work in this space. Um, computer programmers, software programmers, they are trained to work in this space. Uh, if, you have a, if you have a programming degree from an acknowledged and, a, and, a, and, a, and a, a proper university, you are trained to do these things. Psychologists, they work there um, because there are a lot of work that's currently being done in the automation space. Mathematicians, obviously, that's the big, that's the big science for these people. They, they know their maths. Material specialists, what materials are best to make these things from, Statist statisticians, uh, working with data, and, and even some teachers and lecturers, how to automate that part of our world. In the world of technical enablers, ladies and gentlemen, a drone operator is a classic example of the future job that, this, that, 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 that will be in high demand. Um, there are parts in Africa where the countries, the governments start to advertise for professional drone pilots because the demand is so high. They use drone, drone pilots to, to do commercial work, photography, they, they do patrols, border patrols with drones. They, the, the, the application of drones are endless and the legislation that these left bottom people are currently working on, ladies and gentlemen, is that you can't fly a drone um, professionally just if you, if you don't have a proper qualification to fly it, you must be registered. So you become a drone pilot. This is a fascinating one, ladies and gentlemen. It's a technical enabler. She's working on a very sophisticated machine to determine what's wrong with the legs of the patient. So she's not a medical doctor. She's, a, she's a, probably a specialist in, in radiography. And uh, she works, she makes the technology work for us. This is the catch, ladies and gentlemen. These people design the technology who must work for us. These people make the technology work for us. The previous slide that we have about the drone pilot, this person makes the technology work for us. So he enables the technology. That person does the same. This is a te technician working uh, as a 3D printing, printing specialist. Um, there is a, there's a, there's a fascinating growth in the demand for for professional 3D printing operators, uh, ladies and gentlemen, because it's the way the, the manufacture of, ma manufacturing of the future uh, on unique things will work. Uh, so that's also a person that enables the technology to work for us. Who works in this space? Medical, all kinds of. 
technically trained people, special skills, drone pilots, 3D printing technicians, techni technicians, all kinds of, of technicians, pilots. A pilot is just a, a technical enabler. He makes the machine work for us. Then we go left bottom to the functional enablers. They do the work that cannot be done by humans. Nature conservation is one. You cannot replace this man with a computer currently. Well, at least not in the very foreseeable future. I cannot see that you can replace the job that this individual is doing with a machine or with a software or with a camera. It's just not, it's not the, the complexities and the and the, the, the intricacies of the job is just of such a nature that you, you cannot do it with a machine. City and urban planners, ladies and gentlemen, how to design a city that is eco-friendly, how to make use of, of, of the terrain optimally, where to build what, how many people do you need before you build a golf course? Obviously not a lot, um, but these people plan cities. They, they, it's a very innovative job and it's a very intriguing job and there's a lot of complexities and we are just not there to, to do a flyby and, 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 and the software design the city. Maybe we'll get there, but it doesn't seem to be the case very soon. An ordinary electrician can't replace him. Cannot make, you cannot, an electrician and a plumber, you can bet on it. They won't be replaced within the next 20 years with, with with a robot. This, this is a job for hands of people. That's it. That's, there's no question about it. Um, so who works in this space? Physiotherapists. Uh, some of them have a lot of technology that they use on their patients. So part of their job could be as a technical enabler, research work, lawyers, lecturers, caretakers. I'm not so sure that, lawyer, that care, uh, lecturers will be in this space for very long. I have a sneaky feeling that it's a job that will be automated in the, in the very foreseeable future. Caretakers, child care and nursing, um, medical doctors, a lot of their work will become automated, but I think the face-to-face the, the, the -face medical doctor has, has quite a long runway in front of them. Farming, artisans, like I've showed the picture of, 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 of electricians, plumbers, those people, um, mill rights and so on will not easily be replaced by machine. Now the world of the artist, ladies and gentlemen, is a much, much bigger world than what we think. This is actually a, 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 one of the work areas and workplaces that is on, high, an, on a high curve of increase and there, there are huge opportunities. Uh, unfortunately, um, if I was a young person, I, I'm disqualified for this because I don't have art. But the, the interior of a car, for instance, is being, it's not being designed by engineers anymore. It's being designed by artists. And there is a well-known story about one of the top five brands in the world that it's owned, they only allow female artists to design the interior of the car because they, have, they, they, they got results from the market that the soft and, and, and more sort of um, artistically sensitive design of the cars make the cars sell much better. So this is the work of an, art, of an artist. That is the work of an artist. And there's a high demand um, in many countries in the world for interior design and, and in interior artists. And there's even a degree that you can do at some university that's called interior architects. So they become architects and they specialize in how the layout, the look and feel of the inside of the building should be, be it an office, be it a living space, a home, a house, an apartment, be it a manufacturing place, whatever it is, what is the optimal look and feel of the inside of that? Um, web design and, and, and computer interface design, ladies and gentlemen, we spent on the design of Shadow Match and the interface that, that, that we present to customers on the Shadow Match from the Shadow Match engine into the front, front end interface, we spend a lot of money on professional people to design that interface because it must be, if you don't, if you don't have the best designers to design the front end of your, of your computer interface, um, because that is what the, what the customer experience, they don't experience the programming power behind the screen. They experience the screen and 
and a lot of research and a lot of art, artistic research is being is being invested in 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 the training of people to optimize uh, the screen of an interface that you play with or that you work with the artists will work in marketing architects computer interface design software programmers animation artists there's a there's a huge huge opportunity in animation in animation art artwork ladies and gentlemen especially computer animation artists um, musicians visual training designers if you if you design visual material like all the visuals in shadow match it's a professional artist that we use all these videos that we have that we have to show you on your career report for instance being done by a professional artist a makeup artist handbag design artist shoe design uh, clothing design uh, we have on the list so the workplace and the workspace for artists in industry four, in the fourth industrial revolution is huge. With that, ladies and gentlemen, I think I have now given everybody a more um, sort of a complete list about the artist, uh, the, the industry four uh, place of work. I hope it answered most of the questions. It's obviously a fascinating subject if you wanna if you want to research something that could make you um, keep you awake for a very late, I have, um, for those of you who don't know, Lizette is my, my wife. And sometimes um, when Lizette is um, on her way to bed, I say to myself, now I can watch a few industry four videos. I've just watched a video last night, ladies and gentlemen, about a computer application that lands a small aircraft. It's fascinating. It is, it's, it, if it wasn't, that expensive, I would have purchased one because landing an aircraft for me is a stressful event. Um, but, but it's fascinating. You buy the thing and you plug it into the control system of the aircraft. And when you, when you come in to land, you call the tower and you say to the tower, artificial landing in place. And then you hand over and you sit back and it lands the plane perfectly. So it's, these things are coming whether we like it or not. With that, thank you. I'll see you tomorrow evening, but first questions. Over to Lizzie. Thank you, Peter. Very interesting. There were some comments as well that says, thank you very much. Very interesting. Um, a comment from someone that said, um, the examples you gave um, today really helped. Um, she fits into the system designer space and that definitely helps. And she's quite excited to do research about future job opportunities for her. So that's great. There was also a comment from, from Joseph that said, um, functional enablers can use technology to extend their performance, like medical doctors that are now currently using robots. Um, Lizette, can I comment on that, please? Um, Joseph, this is exactly the point that we need to be, we need to take a very switched on and intelligent approach to this because in the functional enabler space where, where jobs are being done by people, you can, you can very quickly and easily switch over into the technical enabler space if you just stay with the developments that is, that is happening in the space, for instance, of lecturing. My son is a maths and, and stats lecturer at one of our local universities. And he said to me that, I don't think, well, he's a part-time lecturer. He said to me that I don't think they're going to renew my contract next year because they're going to automate this thing. It's, it's going to sit on an automated platform. But unless we are very aware of this, um, we, we, can, we can then excel ourselves and move into, the, into a different workspace because there are more opportunities. It's a very intelligent comment that you make. Thanks, Peter. Um, there was a comment from Karma just saying when you started with the test your career that it's definitely a very good idea to get somebody who's currently in the job to either go through the questions with you or especially if you're still in high school and you haven't been exposed to the working environment is to really contact somebody in the possible careers or jobs that you are thinking to, to just chat with that person or to actually go through the questions with you. Now, at that point, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just going to share my screen for a moment. I want to just show you, and this is the link we will include in the email that we sent with the recording. We received this link from one of our consultants, um, actually just yesterday, and she said, please share this where you feel it's, it's the appropriate um, platform. Um, this, is, um, this is a very nice link 
um, let me just close this. Um, you've, you see it on my screen now, ladies and gentlemen, let me just minimize the faces. So I'll send this link to you, but this is a link, um, and specifically now, um, why, because Karma asked the question, this is a website where you can actually go into any, I went into learning about being an area manager. So you can find jobs and you can go into any job to see what is, what is the role or what is that job all about. Now this for an area manager will tell you what will the area manager do, what's the average salary, what are the requirements to become an area manager. Now, if I just go back and maybe it will kick me out because I've been signed, there you are, exp explore potential career paths. And you can see that this website is actually um, in an alphabetic order. You can actually research any job. If you just look at A, B, even babysitter, a barber, a business intelligence analyst. So you can see a CEO, a civil engineer, a community manager, a clinical psychologist, and the list goes on. So ladies and gentlemen, we will share this link with you. And I think specifically for younger um, kids and people that, are, that have been in a job for a long time, now that you know what are the functional and the technical enablers and the artist space, go and research these jobs. I think it's a very nice platform as a start. And then obviously you can, the best is always to speak to somebody in the real world who's been doing the job successfully for quite some time because they will be able to help you. Is it a job? that's intense with regards to people? Do you have to deal with conflict? Do you work with technology? So all those questions will obviously be answered by, by people in the real job. I'm just gonna check the chat to see for questions. Um, give me a moment. Lizette, while you check the chat, um, just a, a view on tomorrow evening. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, in Planning for a career, you must have a plan. I am obsessed with this. And tomorrow evening, I will show you how to create a five-year plan going forward. Successful people have a plan. That's it. It, is, it has been proven, and I know it's not in Stephen Covey's book, Seven Habits of Highly Successful People or Efficient People, but you must have a plan. And I am convinced that having a career plan is one of the things that we neglect we don't put the effort together to put the, the plan, the, the, the five-year plan together. If my career is I have a business, where am I going with this business in the next five years? If I am employed in a corporate, where am I going with, this, with my career in this corporate? If I, at the beginning of my career, wanting to go to university, what are my aims for the next five years? So this is quite a critical uh, a part, part of our four evenings and, uh, and I look forward to share it with you. Back to you, Lizzie. Thank you very much, Peter. There, there are no other questions. I've answered most of them in the chat and given some feedback. I'm just going to quickly allow people to unmute themselves. Should there be somebody that wants to ask a um, question? Let's do that. Ladies and gentlemen, you should be able to unmute yourself. If for some reason you can't, you can just tell me in the chat and then I will unmute you. Um, just want to check that I've disabled all the functionality. Yes, so I've disabled, I think for the purpose of the recording, um, I'm just going to end the session and then you're welcome to stay on for the questions should you have some questions. Tomorrow evening, ladies and gentlemen, well, for some it's not evening, but because we're in South Africa, for us it will be evening. Remember, we've got the guest speaker and tomorrow will be how to design a five-year career plan. That's a very insightful session as well. Peter will take you through a career map. So have a pen and paper handy tomorrow and um, I'm sure you will really enjoy the guest speaker. Thank you very much for joining. Um, I'm going to end the recording, but you're welcome to stay for questions.